Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. My name is Khaldun Azhari. I'm the president of this club, and I have the honor to moderate this event today. Our guest speaker is Mr. Kenji Isizaki. He is professor of the Graduate School of Area and Cultural Studies, Peace and Conflict Studies at Tokyo University of Foreign Studies. And uh, the talk today is about revisiting Article 9, will not protect Japan. Uh, we all know that Article 9 has been uh, uh, very much covered and discussed and uh, became a hub of uh, international and local news and debate and uh, the government of Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is reportedly trying to uh, change or reform the constitution and especially the article 9 and our guest speaker today is think he thinks that uh, it should be changed, but not in the way that <laughs> Prime Minister Abe is trying to do. And uh, our guest speaker today, Mr. Is, 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 uh, Zaki. Zaki, has been uh, an expert in international conflict, and he served at, on UN missions in Afghanistan and Sierra Leone and Palestine, and he wrote a lot of books, and he has extensive experience in this regard. And today he will talk about uh, his experience in the peacekeeping and his theories about the Japanese constitution and the prospects for Japan and its Article 9. Uh, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our guest speaker today. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm, spend, I'm spending around 20 minutes of my presentation. Maybe I invite as a good question and answer session afterwards. <coughs> the title, as Mr. Chairman says, a little bit different from what is announced and also my intention. Okay. I am not genuine pro nine, how do you call, uh, pacifist. I can say, uh, I'm always talking about from the point of view of reality, all right? Anyway, today I am touching upon the recent announcement of Prime Minister Abe regarding Abe Kaken. Okay. Yeah, please look at the slide. Kaken's ka in Japanese means to add something. And ken means constitution, okay? Since Second World War II, Abe regime is, a, is going to be the first one that won the majority in both houses and practically now is capable to change our constitution constitutionally. Okay. Abe Kaken, as Prime Minister Abe means, is preserving Article 9 as it is and writing the name of Japanese Self-Defense Force, JETA, in a newly added paragraph. Okay. My understanding, from my, uh, my, in my understanding, this, his proposal will work like this, in the second slide. Okay. This English translation of Article 9 is official. Okay. You can see in the home page of the Cabinet Office. Okay? And unchanged since GHQ till now. Okay? What Mr. Abe proposes is like this. <coughs> As you can see, the same highlighted forces, okay? forces okay? appear twice in the parag paragraph number two, which is the present one, and the new, newly added one. Okay? The one forces in the paragraph two were denied. Okay? Then in another new added paragraph, okay, it was born again. It's a bit confusing. Those four, maybe some of you understand, you know, how international law, international system works, okay? Those, for those who are knowledgeable in international law, desperately, this proposition is confusing. 
because in the UN Charter, United Nations Charter, a member state is authorized to make use of the forces only for self-defense. Okay? No. Therefore, any land, sea, and air forces are supposed to be for only self-defense internationally. Okay? So how, we can we, how can we differentiate those two forces, not only by appearance, but in a legal sense? However, for Japanese, it is not confusion, but just a custom we have been adapting since the inception of self-defense force. In Japanese, the forces that denied in paragraph number two is senryoku in Japanese, which naturally means military. In contrast, Self-defense forces forces is Thai in Japanese, which implies non-military, okay? which implies non-military. Right? This is a trick. Okay? This is a really trick. That was invented to make self-defense forces appear non-military and also just extension of police forces. Okay? Although SDF today is were the fourth strongest conventional military forces. Right? This trick has been accepted by the four Japanese population, including pro nine pacifists, and formed the foundation of our Shingaku Ronso, Shingaku Ronso in Japanese, the theological dispute conducted exclusively in Japanese language. That is continuous attempt to make up the justification to explain the gap between the changing reality, including the creation of SDF itself, and what Article 9 literally means. Okay. Today, even pro-Article 9 constitutional scholars approves SDF is Goken, in Japanese. Goken means constitutional. Taking advantage of this whole Okay, wide popular approval on the SDF presence. Abe Kaken is now making Prime Minister Abe the very first Prime Minister of the change in Japanese history. But if so happens, our constitution will literally become the constitution of the trick or constitution of self-contradiction. Okay. I don't know the real intention. What is the real intention of Mr. Abe? It could be his genuineness to change so-called Japan's post-war regime, Senghor regime, okay? or just a calculated cynicism, or ridiculing the four things, or I'm sorry to say, using this word, <laughs> using this word, were too retarded to think about consequence. On the other hand, preserving Article 9 unchanged is nothing but to let the constitutional trick to go on. So Abe Kaken, even at this proposing stage, has somehow succeeded in exposing that trick to the daylight. It may remain just a game of the world only, but I strongly believe it will create actual harms. Okay. Actual harm being experienced by those SDF members on the ground. Typical example is the UN, United Nations Peacekeeping Operation, PKO. SDF engineers, of course they are armed, okay, have been sent in the pace of one PKO mission at a time since Cambodia, 1992. Okay. The latest one is South Sudan, as all you know. The famous five conditions for Japan for the PKO deployment became in effect in 1992, same year, and unchanged until now. While the reality of the PKO 
internationally drastically changed in the recent years. The constitutional trick prevented Japan from reflecting or even recognizing that change. The biggest milestone, sorry for this picture after, after eating lunch, sorry. The biggest milestone for the change in UN peacekeeping operation internationally is this, Rwanda, 1994. UN peacekeeping forces are deployed to observe fragile ceasefire between majority Hutu government and minority Tsuchi rebels. Okay. You can see my, uh, uh, my friend, Canadian General Romeo Dallaire. Uh, he was force commander of PKO. Okay. But one day, this peacekeeping environment was suddenly broken by the incident, plane crash that killed the Hutu president. Thereafter, outraged Hutu began systematic killing against minority Tsuchi. What you did? Nothing. Practically nothing. Despite General Dalea's repeated warning and appeal to UN headquarters New York to authorize him to take action. Eventually, whole mission was withdrawn and killing continued and resulted million people's deaths in just 100 days. At that time, UNPKO's mandate was strictly confined to neutrality just to observe ceasefire. Even though they are armed, they are not expected to be the party to the conflict. Okay? Especially this situation with Rwanda, wrongdoing Hutu is a government. Okay? The reason for this cowardness, I can say cowardness of the UN has a fundamental reason. Since the inception of the United Nations, there was no concrete legal framework for UN developed yet to comprehend the situation of if UN commit war crime, okay, if UN peacekeeper commit war crime, there was no legal framework to comprehend this situation. War crime is resulting from being a party to the armed conflict. Okay. This strategy of Rwanda, together with other similar ones, brought drastic changes in the United Nations peacekeeping operation principle as follows. The one, number one, is a change in the mission mandate that is civilian protection rather than ceasefire observation. Okay, now the mission in the South Sudan is exactly this one. Top priority of the mandate of the UN mission is civilian protection, okay. not, not, not being neutral. Okay. So UN troops today would never withdraw even if ceasefire is broken. Okay. Hereby, Japanese, that five principle has already lost its ground. But Japan systematically ignored this change and continued to maintain the constitutional trick until last year. The safest working em environment UN used to provide for our SDF as a guest. Okay, was completely lost last year in the capital Juba, South Sudan, as all, all you know. Okay. Then another one is this. Okay. Commemorating 50th anniversary of Geneva Convention. In 1999, UN Secretary General Kofi Annan okay, ordered all member states to adhere international humanitarian law, IHL, when they deploy UN mandated forces. What does it mean? International humanitarian law is a customary international law, as you know, of war. Okay. That regulates every party to armed conflict 
and whose violation is deemed war crime. Okay. This bulletin is the first attempt in the UN history to establish legal framework of if UN troops become party to armed conflict and resultantly if UN troops commit war crime. Okay. This is how the legal framework works. Metaphorically, I'm using the wheel to explain this concept. Okay. The Excel is International Humanitarian Law, IHL, the core of everything. Okay. One side of the wheel is status of force agreement, SOFA, for Japanese, like such a chikyote, okay? status of force agreement, by which UN makes the host country, like South Sudan, waive jurisdiction over the military crime committed by UN troops. Okay? So, what to do instead? Can we leave it like this? No, no. Another way, this legal framework obligates each troop contributing states to have its own national code to try the, tr the crime. Okay? This is now obligation. This is because UN has not yet acquired the sole generic system of court martial or herself. Okay? How about Japan? Do we have a such a national court to try war crime? No, no, we don't have. Military court is fundamentally different from general criminal court, as you all know. General criminal court, the criminal responsibility stays on the individual who committed. But in the military court, the responsibility stays on the chain of command. That is a big difference. Japan does not have any military code just because SDF is supposed to be non-military. Okay? So in our legal system, war crime we cannot use. War crime, the terminology or even the principle, the judicial principle does not exist, not allowed to exist. Okay? It's a sort of taboo in Japanese judiciary because we are not committing war crime because we don't fight. Therefore, at the time of this UN bulletin in 1999, Japan already lost the qualification to send the troops to UN peacekeeping operation. But again, this very important fact was systematically ignored even by media. War crime is the crime committed by the party to the armed conflict during armed conflict. It's an exchange of the fire. In another word, the crime is committed by belligerent during belligerency. Okay. Let's go back to the Article 9 Paragraph number two, <coughs> okay? As you can see, our constitution says we cannot enter into belligerency. We cannot be, be, we cannot be belligerent, okay? Therefore, it is constitutionally wrong. It's, it's, it, it is cost this constitutionally wrong and inappropriate to assume our SDF is committing war crime. Okay? Even though they have military forces, military power. But just imagine the scenario. The controversial Osprey of the US Army stationed in Japan, flying over congested residential area for the official drill, then crashed and killed many Japanese residents. Under the US-Japan SOFA, Chi Kyote, Status of Force Agreement, Japan does not have jurisdiction over this kind of incident happened on the official duty 
by US force. So the case is supposed to be tried by the US. But if US comes back and scratching her head and says, sorry, we don't have martial court, what will happen? This is called legal vacuum. Legal vacuum. Okay. This is what Japan has been imposing on those host nations like South Sudan when deployed in the PKO. And this is what Japan imposes even at this moment on the people of Djibouti, Djibouti, North, North Africa, by Japan Djibouti Sofa. This is all the cost of that constitutional trick we have been, we have been, we have been indulging. This is a statement made by our Minister of Foreign Affairs during a parliamentary session on the controversial security bill of Abe regime two years back. And this was the response to the opposition party asked if SDF members are captured by the enemy like ISIS or the newly extended duty by the same bill. Do you know any country who declares not to treat its serviceman as a POW? But we are the one. Anyway, the issue is more serious than this joke. If a member of SDF commits war crime abroad or in Japan's peripheral disputed territory like Senkaku, or even inside the mainland of Japan, the same legal vacuum prompts Japanese judiciary to try him or her as a criminal of intent, not of negligence, okay? as the latter is out of jurisdiction of Japanese penal code. Do you understand what I mean? I'm repeating again. The same legal vacuum which we in 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 inherently have okay, will prompt Japanese judi judiciary to try our servicemen, SDF members, as criminal of intent, not of the negligence, as the latter is out of jurisdiction of Japanese penal code. Okay? We don't have martial court, military justice system. Over and above that, even we don't have any legal system to try him or her as okay, criminal of negligence. Okay. In summary, actual harm, actual harm caused by the constitutional trick and legal vacuum has a two folds. One, a legal state, I hope Japan is. A legal state imposes a legal vacuum onto the weaker states, like South Sudan. Number two, legal states, if Japan is so, imposes the blame for the offense caused by that legal vacuum onto individual member of SDF. By Abe Kagen, these possibly envisaged harms are now being constitutionalized. This is the point. But we cannot point our finger only to Abe regime for this constitutional trick. But Abe Kagen definitely is final chapter of this entire comedy of Japan. So what should we do? 
to cope with this situation of today. I can only smile. Now let's debate, maybe. But this moment, what I can do is only to smile. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will start the questions and answer sessions with a smile, as you recommended. <laughs> and it was very interesting ideas you gave. It's a new switch for the debate. I would like to open the floor uh, for your questions and answer. It's open to everybody, not only working press. Uh, please raise your hand if you have any question. And while you thinking about it, maybe I should ask the first question. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. <laughs> Jimbo san. Jimbo san. <laughs> Um, should I ask a question in English or? Yeah, we have no translator. Oh, so <laughs> have, that's, true, that's true, okay. Um, Terry Jimbo with the video news. Um, uh, Professor Sidaki, so um, you, you call for uh, revision uh, uh, of Article 9, but you don't think this uh, Prime Minister Abe's idea is not a good idea. So what is actually your idea mm. of uh, uh, proper revision of constitu uh, constitution, especially the uh, Article 9, and can you explain how it differs from the existing mm -hmm. constitution and uh, Prime Minister's idea? Mm -hmm. Thank you. May I? Yeah. Uh, it's very difficult to answer your question in the, in, the, in, in the shortest possible time because, you know, when I propose my own idea of revision of Article 9, okay, I put some condition if we change Article 9. Okay, without that condition, we cannot talk about any revision. So what is the condition of the revision for me? is to change U.S.-Japan status of force agreement. Okay. Without that, there is no point to discuss about any revision on the Constitution. Okay. Should I go on? <laughs> then Mr. Jejimo. Please. <laughs> okay. So why we have to change our relationship with the United States is uh, very simple. If you compare so-called the sofa that the U.S. makes in the world, Okay. The one U.S. Japan so far is very, very unique. We make in the sense it's only so far unchanged. Okay. In such a long time, 60 years. Do you know how many so far U.S. has? More than 100. Of that, one of them is our so far. Okay. If you compare even so far in the peacetime, peacetime, like Japan, we are not at war, okay? We are in the peace time, okay? The U.S. has the same so far with Italy and Germany in the peace time, okay? Or well, NATO allies, all right? You can see, a, you, can, you can realize there is a difference, but nobody has done this comparison. Can you believe that? We have the most subjective so far in the world, in the peace time. Like a sky here, it's called Yokota, Yokota airspace. Is that ours? And the US base in Okinawa, inside. What US is bringing in, what kind of training they, are, they do, even the Prime Minister Abe has no right to know. This is only Japan is happening. It's never happened in Italy and Germany, even Afghanistan, even Iraq. The second, you know, second negotiation of SOFA has been broken because there was no SOFA. But first SOFA, the U.S. Iraqi SOFA, okay, Iraqi government never allowed the U.S. to do such a things. Sovereignty is the premises of every SOFA which doesn't exist in Japan for 60 years. From an international point of view, international law point of view, 
even though SDF doesn't shoot even a single, single shot, but if US become party to the armed conflict, international law automatically consider Japan is a part of uh, uh, that armed conflict. This is what international law understand. Okay? Even though SDF doesn't shoot anything. Okay. We have to understand this thing. Okay. Article 9 denied the war. But in Japan, Japan, in Japan, uh, Japan can be at war even though Japan doesn't realize. We have to change that relationship. If Japanese don't understand about these things, there is no point to change Article 9 to renounce the war because Japan, Japanese doesn't understand what is war. These two things. This is my point. Okay? So how do we change US Japan so far? I'm not saying uh, the Yankee go home, okay? <laughs> I'm not saying like that. But there is a way to ensure to establish the sovereignty, even though we keep the sofa, okay? Just like other country does, do, all right? So shall we, we have to, as a first step, we should, we should regain, regain sovereignty, sovereignty from United States, then think about constitutional change in order to renounce war at all. Okay, this is my point, Mr. Jimbo. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, may I have follow up? Uh, Sorry. Then, then how do you change that? Okay. So now politically it's impossible to dismantle or disarm or our SDF, okay? And yesterday, uh, Kyo Santos chairman, Mr. Shi, made a, made a speech here. Okay, you, you should have asked the same thing. But even Kyo Santo had dropped that idea to dismantle okay? <laughs> SDF. So there was no political force in Japan to, to dismantle entire SDF. So shall we give up that idea to dismantle SDF, okay? It exists. All right. We cannot allow such a big, big army, but the size doesn't matter, all right, okay, to stay without assuming that horses commit war crime. Can you? Even the Costa Rica doesn't have a permanent army, as you know, but it has a forces. Then Costa Rica has domestic law to regulate forces against war crime, committing war crime. So war crime is assumption of the nations because a nation has to regulate its own army or forces. This is a responsibility by international law. But Japan is the total opposite. We have one of the strongest army, but we don't have any law to regulate them by ourselves. How you can leave this situation like this? Okay. So shall you admit, SDF is army, is a military. Then we should establish domestic regulation and law to regulate them against committing war crime. Then we put another restriction that our SDF should not be allowed to go out of our territory. Very simple. This is my idea of revision. Mr. Jimbo. <laughs> Thank you. I would like to have follow up. You said from the standpoint of international law, if America shot or used arms, so Japan is responsible. Of course, because so we, cannot, we cannot pretend, we cannot pretend that we are neutral. <laughs> so do you mean like, you know, a lot of American forces moved from Okinawa to participate in wars in Iraq That's right. and uh, Korea and other parts. That's right. But uh, the Japanese foreign ministry, they say, oh, it's agreement. We, we have nothing to do with that. We are a peace-loving country. 
So you say no, you are part of the war. That's right. So how can you uh, prove that <laughs> in terms of international law? Where exactly the point? Uh, international the law, point? which which is to play the condition to be the neutral, okay, like Switzerland and that kind of things, okay, to be a neutral, uh, to be the neutral in the international law term, uh, international perspective, you have to be neutral, okay, uh, by by not only participating that war, but even doesn't allow the party to the armed conflict to use the land, even not allowing to even pass the territory. Okay? So contributing money is out of question. All right? Japan does all those things. We provide the land. Okay? without questioning the sovereignty. We allow the American to pass, of course, the sky. We don't have an immigration system. Né? No one can enter into our territory using this Yokota, Yokota airspace, okay, without getting through our immigration. You know that? A huge, 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 huge area in the sky, okay? Okay. Then we contribute huge money to house U.S. Army in Japan. We, s we spend the biggest money for the United States among U.S. allies. Okay. How can pretend we are the neutral? All right. Inter uh, from the point of view of international law, doesn't make any sense. All right. In fact, as you say, Mr. Chairman, yes, the Marines okay, departed from Okinawa for the war in Iraq and Afghanistan, of course. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, may I say one thing? Yes, uh, to, to just follow up, and, uh, and which I am uh, uh, drawing this example of Iraq. As you know, after the Saddam Hussein, the regime is fallen. Okay, and the temporary uh, U.S. U.S. made a sort of uh, 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 governing structure there. U.S. governed the whole, whole, whole of Iraq for the short time, but after independence, and U.S. tried to negotiate with the newly Ira uh, newly established Iraqi government for the SOFA State of House Agreement. Okay, first SOFA they have concluded it was very unique, unique in a sense. Okay. You know, in the first sentence of the sofa, it starts with Iraqi sovereignty. Even though Iraq at that time, Iraq at that time is a battlefield, okay, U.S. cannot do anything without permission from Iraqi government. Can you imagine that? And the last clause of that sofa, Iraqi U.S. sofa, last clause is very interesting. It says that. Yes, U.S. can have the military base within Iraq, but U.S. cannot use that military facility within Iraq to attack other country. <coughs> Iraqi government did it, but why you couldn't do that? Yet we are in a peacetime so far we are talking about. And Iraqi, uh, this, is, this, uh, uh, this is the war time, we are war time so far. All right. It's a joke. Because as I told you, in the world, Japan, US sofa is the only sofa which has not been changed for such a long time, 60 years. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let me <laughs> follow up just before. <laughs> Okay, it was not changed because of the importance of peace and prosperity in the world. So to maintain the peace and prosperity in the world, so far it must be the same in Japan. Because if it's changed, maybe the peace in the world will collapse. <laughs> what do you think about this? Uh, because again, because okay. Japanese government, they, they say hmm. the the American-Japanese security treaty mm. is the most important uh, mm. treaty in the world mm. to maintain peace and, and prosperity. Mm. 
So it seems like you are against the peace and no. prosperity in the world. <laughs> you want to destroy so far. So why do you want to do that? I'm not uh, proposing to destroy the sofa. I'm saying revising to better the sofa. Just like other sofa. All right. We have to be in a real equal partner to think how to defeat enemy together. Not to follow what the UN, uh, US think. All right. We have to think together. <laughs> that, uh, that other allies like uh, Italy and, uh, and Germany is doing. Actually. Okay. We have to have, we have to you know, signify that equality in the sofa by achieving so called reciprocity. Reciprocity. In the NATO sofa, uh, uh, in which uh, uh, Italy and German is a part, okay, they achieve reciprocity. Reciprocity means that, that all the privilege of the sofa is not one-way traffic. It's a two-way traffic. Okay? The, the, the total opposite scenario is possible. If you know, Italy or German send small troops for the short time to the United States, okay, they also enjoy the same privilege. This is what we have reciprocity. Then we can talk about border equal. Japan does not have. Okay? Maybe it's because it's a white man's world. Italy and German is a white man. But look at Philippines. Philippines also achieved the same reciprocity. Okay? But only Koreans in Japan has not achieved that, what, that status. But you cannot compare Korea and Japan because Korean Peninsula is is the status of the war. We are in a peacetime. They are at war. Okay, so you cannot compare two to so far. If you compare only peacetime so far, okay, we are the only one who has not achieved equal status. For the betterment of long lasting relationship between US and Japan, yes, we have to be equal, of course. Sometimes US commit a mistake. We have to correct it. This is what partner means. I have been working with the NATO in Afghanistan for a long time. The fact I saw the way NATO works, because the US has been committing so many mistakes in the battlefield, okay, they criticize as an equal partner. They adjust. Then together, they think how to defeat the enemy, isn't it? Not just to follow what America says, because America itself is making so many mistakes in the battlefield. Okay, this is what I mean. So shall we make that to be realized in the form of revision of so far? This is what other allies have been doing in the history, but we have not yet. Okay. Then we are talking about the constitutional revision. It not, doesn't make any sense for me. Okay. <laughs> for a freelancer from Germany. From my German experience, I have to say, <laughs> so it's not Germany is not so independent, mm. not really totally <laughs> independent. The, um, the American forces operate from Germany. The, the kind of uh, the, the drone war from they do in, in the Americans do in Afghanistan, mm. it's from um, from German bases. Mm. Mm. Uh, so uh, there is a gray zone. Mm. Uh, where the American operates in, in Germany. Mm, mm. And then the other, other point is, I have to say, uh, uh, well, how to, to, how to deal with, uh, uh, with uh, thinking about constitutions. I think the, the Japanese people are satisfied with the situation. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, it, how t it's, it's really difficult, and I think Mr. Abe, he, what he uh, thinks is he knows what the Japanese people want. La uh, last week or two weeks ago, Mr. Ishiba was here. 
He has very uh, radical thinking about a uh, change in the constitution, but I think the pe Japanese people don't don't like it. Mm -hmm. So how to deal with this? <laughs> That's a good question, because the constitutional debate, you know, we believe in in in, in the how do you call it, popular opinion of the, of the population. Of course, I think this is uh, what media media role is actually. But the populism should not lead the constitutional change. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because we like, we love Article 9 as it is. And also we love SDF, of course. Yeah. Okay? So shall we, so let them put together on the Constitution. This is the populism, which you cannot allow, which I can't, doesn't make any sense on this one. Okay? But this is exactly what Mr. Abe is trying to do. All right? Which I'm opposing as a, as a professional. Okay. I have to say, this is wrong, totally wrong. <laughs> this is totally wrong. Relating Germany, yes, thank you very much. And I'm proud to work with, uh, having working with German troops in Afghanistan and Kunduz on this one. And uh, they are the most bravest NATO forces, okay, which broke the tradition, the confined NATO troops, ISAF. ISAF within the territory, within the peripheral of Kabul, because they are very much afraid to get out at that time, 2002-2009. And German troops are the first one to go with me, yeah. okay, to the Kunduz and North, okay, to do the first disarmament program, all right. And of course, in 2008 and 2009, and Japan and Germany has faced some biggest one, but the biggest challenge that because of missing information of German officer gave to the uh, NATO headquarters, okay, that war plane bombarded civilian population and causing more than 100 deaths. All right, I'm sorry about that. But, but German dealt with very professionally, okay. German dealt with militarily, of course, because you don't have any military court. But you have a you have military criminal law, yeah. or the ombudsman system and other things. So professionally, they dealt with militarily that war crime you have committed. No, not your, your country committed. Okay, this is what I try to take as a good example for the Japan in the future. Okay, you have many things to learn from German, German experience. Okay. <laughs> A kind of follow-up question. Uh, so uh, there's clearly an issue with the uh, uh, SOFA, uh, much more so probably than Constitution, or uh, before Constitution. But why do you think it is that the uh, Japan, Japanese in general, as well as the, um, the government, uh, never even Consider proposing the uh, change uh, or negotiate, you know, start negotiation uh, to change so far. Um, I mean, everyone knows that the airline airplane leaving the Haneda Airport will have to go around the uh, Be uh, the Izu uh, Peninsula or Isewan uh, to only to get to Osaka because uh, air airspace uh, over Tokyo is controlled by U.S. military. Um, the uh, you know U.S. can use the base in Japan anywhere they want to. They can do even night landing practices, and uh, they can you know use live bullets that, that often gets out of base in Okinawa. Uh, it's still happening like you know on a daily basis, but no. Um, basically, I don't really I haven't I don't remember seeing this so far becoming a political issue at all. Uh, as uh, uh, he said, do you think Japanese in general satisfied with it or? Uh, uh, what's you know you you know obviously you're not a psychology professor you're you know international law professor, but what's this uh, you know psyche um, of Japanese that this sofa uh, is like almost untouchable, mm -hmm. and uh, even you know thinking about uh, uh, revising it is something of like a danger dangerous uh, you know thinking or something. Mm -hmm. I think this is the matter of making ev everything the taboo. <laughs> The once something is made as a taboo and stay for a long time, it become it become 
something which we don't even question. Okay. Why so far Japan and US never changed? It can be attributed to one single reason. Because most of the US base in Japan is concentrated in Okinawa. Okay. This is not the case of other countries. Okay. If something happened by accident caused by US military, okay, the outrages, popular outrages become national outrage. Then anti sentiment uh, sentiment against the US developed. Then it it will move things. Okay, this is how so far has been devised in other countries, including Germany. Right? But in Japan, somehow, you know, this is happen. You know, concentration of uh, US bases in Okinawa, and most of the grievance is is accumulated in Okinawa Island only. Okay. It's never been hard in the mainland. It never be become a, a popular national issue. This is the reason. Okay. And also, since this is the FCCJ, I have to blame media. <laughs> okay. Japanese media especially doesn't lead, okay, doesn't lead primary sources. Like NATO so far is available now in the NATO homepage. It was not like before. Okay? And before before the internet age, okay, to look at a sofa, you have to go to National uh, Library of the, of the Government and search for the document. But now it's very easy. The supplementary agreement between US and German, Italy, you can see very easily. It's available on the net. Okay? If you visit Japan, Japanese government foreign ministry homepage and search for and visit that section of sofa, Japanese sofa. It's, it's total lie. Uh, still, still there in the, in the Japanese government homepage. And they take example from, from German sofa. Supplemental sofa in the United States saying that German government huh, forfeited almost all charges killing and all, all the high criminal and Japan, uh, German government is forfeited, which is totally a lie. <laughs> it's never happened in that way. In the supplement so, supplement so far in German and the United States is, is talking about totally opposite. Any serious crime committed by US troops in German soil, killing, extortion, anything, rape and everything, okay? German jurisdiction has a, has a supreme power to deal with that. that this is what SOFA says. But in our government homepage, talking about the home, uh, the, uh, the total opposite. It's, it's better to check, OK? After, uh, after leaving here, please check that foreign ministry homepage on that section. It's a lie. But why Japanese government can make such a lie? Because Japanese population, they, think, they, they, they are taking a ride of Japanese population negligence, which is caused by negligence of Japanese media. That's all. <laughs> yes. Just let me comment again on this <laughs> issue. You know, recently, whenever the traffic police in Okinawa arrest some drunken American soldier, you know that the standard of drink in the United States is different than Japan. <laughs> Japan, if you take a sip and uh, the police, traffic police, you know, detect that, uh, we will be arrested. But maybe in America you can have one glass of wine and it's okay. Mm -hmm. So recently there are a lot of news about uh, the drunken soldiers being arrested. So it means the Japanese media is really giving good attention to the issue. And whenever there's a case of girls uh, raped or something, mm -hmm. It's big news everywhere and the front line news and uh, prime time news and TVs. So I, I think, I don't understand what you mean by Japanese media is not uh, following up this. Okay, okay. Sensation is always happen after the big incident like, uh, like rape and killing small girls and that kind of things. But, but then it disappears. 
Mm? It never formed as a constructive okay, national movement to, to change the situation as a system. That is why so far doesn't change. Because you know, the, those incidents were just regarded, okay, local grievance of Okinawa. That's all. Then, uh, my only way to do is just compensate monetarily Okinawa for the sake of national security. Okay. But to talk about the future national security, as I explained, it is very important to be, to be, to become equal partner to United States. To think together the strategy, how to, how to overcome this war which America started. All right? <laughs> Thank you. One day it will come to Japan, okay? <laughs> we still have time, no questions. Yes, you can free it, you I think uh, in the in, in, uh, uh, country, or the, uh, in the way uh, Mr. Abe wants to change the constitution, I think uh, it's, it will be many unclear. But in in a, in a, it's not the danger that in a in a time of a war there is some space Mr. Abe can or the prime minister can act. So in 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 a danger in the case of a war. Uh, there is not this kind of. Uh, uh, he he has he can he can do something or he will do something. Mm. So this is not perhaps this may be the real danger that now it's very unclear. But um, in the really uh, uh, war situa situations, this is not not said what the Prime Minister can do and if it's not said what he can do mm. he will do a lot mm. 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 He, he has free he has free uh, room to deal because it's not said how, what he can do mm. 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 yeah maybe it's a matter of uh, state emergency uh, kind of things whether we can constitutionalize the state emergency it means we seize the function of constitution uh, because of the emergency, okay? Uh, we don't have a, such a provision yet, but we have been discussing. Uh, this government has been discussing from uh, Minshuto uh, Democratic Party at the time, all right? And I don't want to touch up on this issue because it, it's, it's going to be very lengthy <laughs> about, about these things, all right? Whether our constitution should absorb the, the, uh, the idea, uh, the situation of, of, of emergency, right? Uh, where the constitutional uh, constitution will will uh, will stop the functioning <laughs> of course so. but we have to think about these things all right and uh, I think uh, one of the uh, main motive of uh, Abe regime is exactly the one you know, how to regulate uh, what they call secession of the constitution to function okay what do you imagine in the name of the emergency <laughs> All right. Let me ask again. No, you you mentioned that there is legal legal vacuum. Japan has been imposing on uh, nations like South Sudan and uh, Djibouti. Djibouti, yes. Uh, could you please elaborate more on this issue? What kind of legal vacuum and what's the benefit for Japanese mm. government and what's the side effect, negative side effects for Djibouti and uh, South Sudan. Mm. Thank you. Because we are invading very seriously the Djibouti or South Sudan's okay, uh, sovereignty, national sovereignty. Because we are sending military forces without taking responsibility of aftermath of if our SDF make a shot. Okay? Mm -hmm. America doesn't do that. Even America. <laughs> All right. We are the only country who does that. Without even assuming, after mass of shooting, how we can send military power to the abroad. Please tell me, 
if such a country exists. But this is what exactly what we're doing. Okay? If the host country relationship in, and Japan is very, very good, okay? So the host country that has nothing to complain about Japan as a country, okay? Maybe we can deal with such an such incident by paying money, compensation. But I'm sorry, nowadays, this is totally opposite. South Sudan dislikes UN troops, including Japanese forces. Okay? If UN troops make the incident, South Sudanese government will make the issue out of that very much. Djibouti okay, is an Islamic country, although it's, a, it's a very peace, peaceful. But look at what is going on in the surrounding country, the Yemen, and the opposite. Okay? Other North African countries. Now, somehow I ISIS has been militarily confined in Iraqi and, and Syria, as, I, as we expected. But we have to expect the okay, same thing will happen in Afghanistan at that time. We thought we killed all the Taliban, but they survived. They scattered. They gained the strength, then attack us back. Okay? Now ISIS also do the same thing. Now they will be scattered, including, including Europe and other places. All right? Then other scenario of the war will begin. Okay? Then today's Djibouti will not be tomorrow's Djibouti. Maybe popular dislike against the foreign troops may be developed from now on. We cannot stop that. Then in such a situation, if our SDF under that so far commit a crime, then Djibouti population knew, came to know that Japan has any legal judicial system to deal with that incident. What's the feeling of the population? Just like we dislike America when the America commit, commit a crime, same thing will happen. More seriously. Because we still love Americans. But Djibouti people will keep on loving Japan. No guarantee. Yes. <laughs> yes. Mr. Chairman, hello, don't pass me. <laughs> yes, right. Last question, this one. <laughs> Mitsuya Goto, an old associate member, now <laughs> life member of this club, international consultant. Uh, North Korea has declared that uh, the U.S. bases in Japan could be the target of their, their missiles. Uh, do we have to depend on the U.S. forces to sh shut it down? <laughs> it's a good question. As as uh, uh, as he he you know can you say that? Okay, if there was no base, if there's an America within Japan, okay, there's no reason for the North Korea to hate us. Isn't it? Of course, we have a historic something, and we have a, we have a abductees issue also. Okay, but this is not ex this cannot be the excuse of <coughs> war. Okay, so there was no reason to to think about the war for the North Korea if Japan does not have United States within ourselves. Right? But things are so easy to imagine because the feeling of threat feeling of the enemy is always politicized because this is the politician's job to create a fear and exchange of that to get more support. This every leader, with, even opposition does that. <laughs> so this process is called securitization in the international relation, uh, the study, okay, securitize. Okay, securitizing population. So we cannot avoid that. We cannot nullify because this is a natural tendency of human society. Okay? Okay. So there are many threats. China, North Korea, namely, even Korea, South Korea also. Okay. 
So the feeling of threat is being secure, secure, uh, secure, se se securitized, all right, that we cannot stop. But only the effort we, we can do is uh, desecuritize, desecuritize. We cannot kill securitization, but we can somehow desecuritize by bringing in other perspective to look at that preserved enemy. Okay? One of the two things when we are talking about North Korea is that if America doesn't exist within Japan, we have no reason to be disliked by North Koreans. This is one thing. Okay? It doesn't mean Yankee get out. No. <laughs> there is a way to, to, to compensate, maybe by changing so far, as I said. China, do you think China will invade us? Okay. China is a member of the Security Council. It's a custodian of international law, especially the law of, uh, uh, law of war. Yet, we are still in the enemy states. Okay, Japan is still in the enemy states. We are the below normal membership, member states of the United Nations. Okay. In the perspective of international law, China and Japan is not equal. I'm saying. Okay. China is a superpower, just like just like United States. But from the point of view of law of war, okay, China is one of the best performing superpower, not breaking international law, especially law related to the war. Okay? Who is the main culprit to break the war? Is the United States of America. Just like the recent shooting by Trump on Syria. How do you explain that international, from the point of international law? This is not an act of self-defense. This is not an act of collective defense. So, so what? China never does that. Okay? So this is uh, the one way of desecuritization to look at the enemy. It doesn't mean doesn't mean China is China is not threat. Right? China is a threat, but we have to somehow always keep doing desecuritization. <laughs> Thank you very much. We take your advice to desecretize <laughs> the relations in East Asia. And uh, I would like to extend to you one year honorary membership. Oh, thank, you one year. thank you for coming <laughs> and give us these insights. Thank Please come guys. again. Okay. And we will come here at any time for one year. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. Have a nice evening.